Welcome back. Great to have you with us on On Point. EFF leader Julius Malema now is in Kenya to attend the launch of the Pan-African Institute at Makweni. The EFF has positioned itself as a Pan-Africanist movement. Malema is addressing attendees at the launch. Let's listen in. Kenya or Nairobi, as if I'm a visitor. I regard no part of Africa as being foreign to me because Africa, all of it, belongs to me and I belong to Africa. It is a humbling, it's a humbling honor to be invited to address the launch of the prestigious Pan-African Institute, which is targeted at creating intellectual collaboration and unity amongst the people of the continent. Let us therefore begin by congratulating you on this initiative, which is long overdue in light of the importance of the continent to reclaim its intellectual and academic identity within the global community in general. We know that ideas are at the core of the African capacity to chart its own destiny within the community of the world. Intellectual sovereignty has to be forced through research and development that is steeped in African experiences African problems and African questions. The economies, the economics of the African Academy have been part of the modalities of the broad draining of our resources. Because of lack of dedicated funding, many thinkers in the continent are taken in the general brain drain driven by Euro American institutions. As we have seen over the decades, there is no way Euro-American is going to fund an intellectual project that will see Africa truly become intellectually sovereign. A truly sovereign Africa is a threat to the imperialist establishment that continue to determine the agenda and control of our resources. It is also inspiring to see that our esteemed Prof. Lumumba and those who are joining him in this initiative have chosen our continent and Kenya in particular to establish an intellectual research and knowledge institution. Accordingly, our first duty is to call on sons and daughters of the continent, both based here and in the diaspora, to jealously fund this institute and ensure that it creates charts, create and charts a unique Africa based on an original thought because we have a duty to chart our own intellectual path. We are also inspired by the fact that the institute concept of Pan-Africanism includes all people of African descent. That is, those in the continent, the Americas, Caribbean islands, Europe, and Asia. This is because wherever they are found, people who look like you, and me continue to be treated as an inferior race. When you see a black person, when you see an African person, everywhere else in the continent, in the diaspora, and all over the world, please be kind to African people, for because they are a hated nation. Wherever they are, they are being enslaved, they are being tortured, they are being harassed. No one shows them love. But you, as an African who claim to be a pan-Africanist, you have a responsibility to show fellow Africans love and care. <laughs> the violent, genocidal, and catastrophic transatlantic slave trade and colonialism are the historical twin towers that plugged the humanity of Africans into the dark night, which to this day seem to have no end in sight. The image of the African as a black and subhuman was forged through massive and violent enslavement of millions of African people sold in the Americas as properties of white colonial settlers. In the coastal and mainland villages of West Africa, through the gun, the dogs, and the spears, African communities were plundered, captured against their will, and chained like animals. At the ports of, Ka of Ghana, those chained, naked, and malnourished bodies of men, women, and children 
were scaled, measured, and sold for gold, silver, or livestock. They were put in those gigantic ships that crossed thousands of kilometers of the massive body of violent and cold waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Millions will not survive the dangerous voyages on sea. They will die of disease, starvation, or pure mental illness. Many will be offloaded alive, thrown into the deep waters to ease navigation during the storms of the violent seas. It is on those cold Atlantic Oceans, waters, deep in the bottom of the ocean, that many carcasses of African people, their bones lay rotten in chains and swallowed by the sea. Those who survived and on arrival in the Americas were forced to work in the different plantations of white men. From the voyage ships to the plantation, the image of an inferior African was being constructed through brutal force. Then began the violent colonial conquest for settlement aimed at our natural resources that defined our native continent. The white man sought to rule Africa and here designed a system of racial segregation, racial humiliation, racial abuse that lasted for many centuries. The colony and the plantation with the voyage slave ships in the middle were the perfect technologies of recreating the African into a subservient being whose only survival in the modern world must always be through wide tutelage, supervision and approval. The transatlantic slave trade, colonial conquest and colonial rule are responsible for the zombification of the African soul and its intellectual damnification and the psychotic condition where Africa and its people cannot handle their affairs without white supervision. As both an intellectual project and a program of revolutionary change, Pan-Africanism is first the recognition of this terrible history, which by all definition remains a world history that has cast the African into a global ident identity of inferiority amongst people of the world. Pan-Africanism is never forgotten noise of the painful cries of those captured slaves whose black bodies were swallowed by the Atlantic Ocean from the slave ships. It is the agonizing cry from the brutal violence suffered by the black slaves in the sugar, cotton, and corn plantations from Georgia to Sao Paulo. Pan-Africanism is also the resounding victory from the theater of the Haitian Revolution from 1781 to 1804, led by the greatest descendant of our continent, Toussaint Lovencho. Together with his patriots, they bravely led the first and only successful slave revolution in human history. Defeating a combined European force combined, commanded by a France Napoleon Bonaparte. It is the bravery of those African former slaves who will define citizenship on a racial definition of blackness, declaring that Haiti belongs to black people regardless of the color of their skin. Pan-Africanism is also the anger emanating from the countless defeats suffered by the patriots, the brave soldiers like those of Mau Mau and Bambata rebellion defeated at the hands of the brutal British colonial forces. It is the intellectual heritage of Marcus Garvey, W. E. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, Har Harriet Tubman, Pixley Isaac Seme, Charlotte Mateke, Winnie Mandela, Kwame Nkuruma, Seiko Torre, Julius Nerere, Haile Selassie, CLRA James, Franz Fanon, Thomas Sankara, and today our own Prof. Lumumba, together with us, must carry the medal of the African Pan-Africanist Pan Corps. Pan-Africanism is a set of ideas written in chains with blood, spear, 
and the unforgiving guns of the sons and daughters from the Algerian revolution to the battle of Kutokonavan. It is the one party state of Africa as a whole as professed by Marcus Gavi. It is Ami Cesare's negritude, Kwame Nkuruma's African socialism, Steve Biko's black consciousness, Julius Nyerere Ujama. It is also Mbegi's African renaissance, all based on forging a unity of African people who are formed by the same history and must seek after common destiny. It is the architectural achievement from the pyramid of Egypt to the cities of Mapungube. It is the industrial invasion by Garrett Morgan, traffic lights, Frederick Jones, refrigerated trucks, and Alexandra Mars, automatic elevator doors. It is the cultural movement in jazz, R&B, reggae, funk, blues, Kwaito, Juju, Nigeria, Chimorenga, Zimbabwe, Makosa, Cameroon, and Benga, Kenya. It is the novel, Things Fall Apart, The Devil on the Cross, Maru, The Trails of Brother Jeru, Songs of Solomon, and Notes of Native Son. It is the artwork of Gerald Sekoto, Chike Anyako, Oche Okeke, Edmonia Lewis, the religious movement of Bishop Lekhanyane, Manku, and Shembe, the Coptics of Egypt and the Ethiopian Orthodox Christians, as well as Islamic denominations from Tunisia, Nigeria, Kenya, all deserve a place in the rich thinking and knowledge about Africa and its people. It is true that Pan-African call has also been prophetic carrying important questions that those who conducted the project for the rebirth of the African continent in the post-colonial context have not heeded to. In the pages of Franz Fanon, Richard of the Earth, lays a critique which, since independent in the 1950s to this day, leaders of African people have failed to give programmatic response to this call. First and foremost, the Pan-African Call is a call for African unity, not cooperation, collaboration, or coexistence. Many of you confuse the unity of Africa to mean collaboration or cooperation. We don't want to cooperate. We don't want to collaborate. We want to be one, and being one means we must share the same vision and the same direction. Yet many over the past half a century of chosen cooperation which has given way to neocolonialism. That is to say, for African leaders to continue colonialism without direct rule by colonialists. The launch of the Pan-African Institute right here in Kenya must help us intellectually to shift towards revolutionary Pan-Africanism, contribute to resolving some of the historical mistakes, blunders committed by post-liberation movements. We should state clear here that while the formation of the Organization of African Unity was a step in the right direction, the fact that the founding conference failed to unite the African continent is a historical blunder. President Kwame Nkrumah, Seko Tore, and Emperor Haile Selassie prophetically said that the failure to unite the African continent will give rise to the neo-colonialism and that African continent will perish. The revolutionary Pan-Africanist ideological and political diagnosis of the, few, of the future was correct. The future is here. 50 and 50 years later, we know that we remain visitors in our own continent. We know that our resources benefit Euro-American that than our own people. This is despite most African countries gaining independence from colonial rule since 1957. Massive, huge tracts of land, our mineral resources, our animals, our oceans are still owned and controlled by the colonial masters. There are no countries in the entire African continent that have gained full economic emancipation and independence. And this includes Ghana, which was the first to lead the road 
till to date it can't claim that Africans in Ghana own the means of production. In 2016 report titled The New Colonialism reveals that the 101 British companies listed on the London Stock Exchange that control and identified 1.5 trillion US dollars worth of resources in Africa in just five commodities, oil, gold, diamond, coal, and platinum. This is a very conservative figure since it includes resources listed by only some companies. Many companies do not provide the figures of the resources they control. And majority of these companies that do not tell us what they control and what they own in Africa are found in DRC. Because they are the ones who fuel the divisions in DRC. They are the ones who fuel the fight in DRC. And they are stealing the resources of DRC because they know there is no proper accountability for such resources. The war on want report on neocolonialism further illustrate that the fact that these 101 companies control and own the following key resources on our continent. 6.6 .6 billion barrels of oil currently worth 276 billion US dollars. They control 79.5 million ounces of gold worth 119 billion US dollars. They control 699.3 million currents of diamonds worth 134 billion of US dollars. 3.6 billion tons of coal worth 216 billion US dollars. 287 million ounces of platinum worth 305 billion US dollars. These are the numbers that reflect British neocolonialism in the African continent. I've not spoken about what French companies are doing. The Portuguese continue to play a significant role in the economy of Mozambique and Angola. The French continue to micromanage all the countries that were their colonies except the recent liberated zones of Mali and Burkina Faso. <laughs> Comrades, the French are brutal. To a point that post-colonialism, they still make certain African countries to pay colonial tax to France. The French are brutal because some of their former colonies, their reserve banks are still in France. They are not in control of their own economy, yet they claim to have an independence. We, as progressive Pan-Africanists, must fully associate with and support all revolutionary actions of fighters who are removing puppets of French imperialism from political office and power. All right, uh, let's come out there. That is Julius Malema, EFF leader, speaking in Kenya, live right now at the launch of the Pan-Africanist Institute.